All right, welcome back to Getting Past the Premium, everybody. Back with another crossover episode with my man, Brett Young. Be extraordinary, Urban Young, all the cool stuff that you see out yeah. there. How we doing, brother? I'm good. Good to see you, man. I know. It's always, every time we, we get to talk, it's like, man, it's been too long. It's only been a month, but you know. Right. It comes quick. It, it comes does. Quick. It does. It's yeah. good. That's good. Well, uh, we were just talking offline. Uh, excited to see all you guys out there grinding away two days a week in the morning. It's awesome. You, you and your team. That's that's a pretty sweet thing you do. I don't think uh, I don't know if everybody out there's seen it or not, but you guys do a team workout twice uh, twice a week, and I think that's pretty sweet. I don't know if you want to mention anything about that, what what it's meant to you guys, but I just think it's pretty cool. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's voluntary. Uh, we pay half, they pay half, but we have a third party uh, NLP specialist and trainer who, who goes through a whole curriculum for six months. So everybody that you see that's in those team workouts is there because they're paying to be there. Um, and that they voluntarily, you know, kind of raised their hand and said that they want to go deeper down the development road. So yeah. that's, that's what's most special to me is those people are showing up uh, and they've elected to do more than what's required. And they're, they've got skin in the game, which is cool. That's sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Well, it's been fun to watch, so keep it up. Um, so I wanted to pick your brain a little bit today. I think uh, an area that would be uh, good for, for everybody listening is centered around client relationships, right? And I think, you know, this has evolved. I'm going to make a blanket statement in our industry, but I think this has evolved uniquely over the years where, you know, it used to be where before technology and everything, it was, you know, a lot of it was all about the relationship because it was you usually a locally, you know, a local agency in your local town. You knew everybody, you went to the country club, you know, it was all about who you knew. And I think with the advent of technology that has put a couple different options out there, depending on how you want to build your firm. Right. But you can build a very transactional, you know, online uh, efficiency driven firm if you want. Um, but I, I don't think it diminishes the importance of building a relationship or having a strategy around building a relationship with your client. Uh, so I was curious, you know, cause you're, you guys do a lot, a lot, a lot of personal lines and that's a high volume business, which sometimes I think can be harder to build client relationships. So I'm curious, mm -hmm. just your perspective, how do you view client relationships uh, let's start there. Yeah. How, how do you view the client relationship and like what, what should a good client relationship look like? Oh uh, man, that's a good, that's an open-ended question. Um, I think it evolves. I think it depends. I do agree with you. I think the personal line side is uh, much more challenging than uh, your commercial, but then I'd also say small commercial is more difficult than what we call advisory or middle market or, or larger commercial. So um I think the higher the price point, the less volume, the less volume, the more depth with the relationship that you can go. Yep. However, I think there's two two parts of relationship I think that I look at is one is, you know, a personal relationship with somebody. They know them like personally and there's a there's an actual name, there's a human being attached to that. And then there's relationship with actual uh, from a brand perspective. Um, you know, I have a relationship with this firm. I have, and I don't think a lot of people would would would, would articulate it that way. But when yeah. I think about relationship, I, like I ask the question of like, why is it important to have a relationship? You know, our tagline before we rebranded was focused on the relationship, not the transaction. Yes. So we built an entire firm based off of this idea to have this uh, relationship with clients. And as it evolved, the idea of what a relationship is has evolved. Um, and I think that has been, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? <laughs> in something way, and then it ends up being something else. But oh, yeah. so for, for me, I, for me, I look at it two ways, you know, there's, there's the actual personal relationship that I have with a client, but there's also the, the brand and the relationship they have with the brand and the product that we deliver. And so for us, um, we have spent a lot more time on that second part of the brand Mm -hmm. and, and less time on the personal relationship with each client. Um, however, that is not to say our agents are not extremely focused on that. It just becomes a point in time when you're doing volume that that, that same one-on-one -on -one time becomes a little bit more difficult at the larger you get and the bigger yep. your book becomes. And that's, I think that's something I've, I struggled with that a lot 
early in my career a little bit because it was just like, man, this is what I based my entire value prop off of. Yeah. And now I'm not able to have the same level of depth and it would bother me. And, you know, you do have clients who would, you know, kind of give you a hard time. Don't mm -hmm. get too big. And you know, I still have some of my best clients today, large commercial clients say, man, don't get too big, you know, because they just perceive getting big of losing that uh, relationship. But I, I wrote down a couple of things, Elliot, man. It's like, to me, I asked like, okay, why do relationships matter? Like, why does somebody want a relationship? And for me, it's two things. It's trust and it's access. Like if I, if I want a relationship with somebody specifically with insurance or even a financial investment, that's, you know, there's a high level of trust there. Trust, I would consider advocacy the same thing as trust, but I want to be able to know that what you tell me is accurate. I want to be able to know that what you're going to suggest is in line with my values. If I know you and you know me, then you should know, understand what's important to me, what my value set is. Therefore, yep. you're layering different solutions on top of that value set. So therefore, I don't have to go through due diligence every time you recommend something because there's trust and we have a relationship. It expedites the process. I don't have to make 15 decisions that you just tell me what to do and I do it. And then number two is preferred access, right? If I have a relationship and I need something done, I can make a phone call and get somebody to put me to the top of the stack and I have this preferred type of treatment, you know? So yeah. for me, I think those two things are what epitomize what a relationship looks like there are probably maybe one or two others i, I, I you know I, that's just the two that i think about for my own stuff yeah, no, own, pretty cool yeah what we do for you know just clients so um I'll, I'll stop there but i have you know some different thoughts on that but i think there's two levels i think there's the relationship personally with somebody and then i think there's a more strategic approach about how do you create relationships with your clients even though maybe Brett Young isn't having a direct relationship with customer A. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's that's spot on. And the big thing that I always tell people is I think just have a, a strategy, have 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 it thought through. Cause like what you were talking about there, where you know you built your value prop on a certain type of relationship that you felt was necessary with a client, eventually, you know, that may not be where you can provide value because now you have too many clients or you have, you have, have to go upstream or yeah. And yeah. so it, without having that somewhat thought through that strategy of how you're going to be able to execute on client relationships, uh, you're going to get into that or you could get into that situation. Right. And so that that's I the mean, biggest thing for me. And just to be transparent, I mean, that's exactly what happened to us. That's exactly yeah. what happened to us. You know, like we, we, we based our entire value prop, um, against competing with some of the bigger shops in the industry and having that that one on one relationship and, and it worked. But a, a, a mentor told us a long time ago, don't do what works, do what duplicates. And we violated that rule out of the get go because yeah. that doesn't duplicate. It duplicates by you having to just add more people, but you yeah. don't gain more capacity. Right. So it's like we did that and we did it at a level in which we were having success and we created this new problem that took us a long time to figure out how to get around. Um, and candidly, we're probably still dealing with that to some extent, but to your point, we didn't think about the end in mind. We didn't think about scale. We didn't think about uh, where we wanted to go. And, and so I don't regret any of it. And we still do a lot of the stuff from a relationship building perspective, but setting the expectation up front of why someone's going to do business with us and leading with relationship uh, that would have been me back in the day and my partners back in the day. Um, but we don't do that anymore. That's not necessarily how we position ourselves in the market because, you know, we've lived on the other side of that where we weren't able to deliver on that promise. Yeah. Yeah. And I think important too, to, I, at least for me, uh, define what we mean by personal relationship too, because I think when you're the way I'm gathering it, and this has been my experience too, in the past is, you have those clients that basically do business with you because you've either become or are a friend, you know, like you yeah. go, you have beers with them, you play golf with them, you're involved in certain things. And, you know, I would argue this though, like with anybody that, that builds a book on that, because like you said, number one, it's not scalable and it's not duplicatable, but also that could be the first thing to go. Cause I, you know, you've probably experienced this, but I've had clients that will move business because there's, there starts to be friction. Like we're, we're all going to screw up somewhere, right? Like something's going to get, uh, you know, a late, uh, you're, you're going to forget to email somebody back or, you know, whatever. And there's going to be friction. 
somewhere. And so I've had folks that are like, Hey, I just don't want this to impact the friendship, you know, like, so then they move the business. <laughs> You're like, well, that was the whole reason you were doing business with me, you know, and, or vice versa. That. And so, you know, and that. so it's, it, but, but I, I think there's just a better way to drive long-term value in that relationship with the client. So that's how we view client relationships is, you know, we, we need to have a deep enough relationship, which means we need to understand that client well enough to understand what they care about, what's important to them, you know, their business, so on and so forth, so that we can provide the right value. And obviously that means we're going to, yeah, build friendships and we're going to be amicable and nice and, you know, have a good time. But I don't want to rely on my golfing schedule to keep a client, you know, because that's just, that's not a long-term recipe for success, right? I feel um, like that, that can't be overstated though, because like there, are, I bet you 75% of the people listening to this right now are shaking their head going, yeah, you know what? I probably got that <laughs> kind of friends with that person. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. just happens. It just naturally 100%. happens. Look, they like you, you like them. And there's not, there's nothing against that. Trust nothing is wrong a with huge, it. huge component. It's just, if that's what you define as relationship, then you just there's just certain bottlenecks that occur with that that are painful. So I'm glad you define it that way. I wish that we would have gone back and defined it that way. Um, I, I can't sit here in front of you and tell you that we didn't start out with the intention to have personal relationships at a level in which that was unsustainable. And I think that was a mistake. So that's that's cool yeah. that you have that framework. I like that a lot. Yeah, and it, it allows you to then start to, again, like you said, not that you're not going to build those you know, true personal bonds with people, but it allows you to have that building. You, you can build systems around it. Right. And so you start to figure out like, what do I need from that client in order to build what I consider a solid relationship to provide the value that I want? Well, that doesn't always mean I have to sit down in front of them. Maybe I could gather information from a form or a survey about their business or, you know, that I can intake and then deliver certain solutions to them. Or whatever yeah, risk tolerance. Risk tolerance would be perfect. Uh, yeah. what, you know, there's a sliding scale of risk tolerance. Wherever somebody lands on that helps me deepen a relationship. It allows me to understand where your values are, right? Yeah. So I can I can make better uh, predictions and assumptions and recommendations based upon the relationship, which is objective data that allows me to understand your profile instead yeah. of it's been two weeks since I've had golf with Jerry and I really <laughs> checked in with him. So he feels important, you know, and I'm, you know, like that's just kind of how that goes, you know, yeah, it is, it is. And it, and it doesn't scale very well. And, you know, sure you can have fun doing that, but like, it also gets really just stressful. <laughs> like, it wears you out. Oh, it wears you out. God bless my partner. He's one of the best at it. He's this superpower and he does big, big commercial. So it, it works for him. But you know, it's, it's very stressful. I watch him run from event to event, to event, to event, to thing, to thing, to thing. And luckily he just likes doing that, but like yeah. there's some, he just runs himself ragged and, and it's just because he feels an obligation to be this thing, this person, this identity that, you know, it, it's, it's just not intuitive to be able to set that up for somebody to duplicate. You might yeah. be able to do it because you like to do it, but when someone else is looking, they're asking like for team members and producers are asking, do I have time to do what you're doing? Do I want to do what you're doing? And can I do what you're doing to the people that I interact with every day? And if they can't answer yes to those things, then they're just going to go, no, I don't want to go do that. I'll just do something else. It's going to yeah. help you. It's going to hurt you with recruiting. It's going to help you developing. It's going to help you retaining. Like it's a problem. You know, it's like, I don't want to become you. I don't want to deal with that. You know? Bingo. Bingo. No. So I think I still feel that it, in moving forward, I think it's going to be even more important that we really dial in what we mean by and how we drive relationship because uh and again i love your perspective on this but everything's gotten so tech driven so virtual you know we're having this podcast virtually like uh that i think the the personal relationships and and people feeling like you truly do understand them and mm -hmm. uh you know you know who they are and whatnot i think that's going to come back around as being a big value prop but again, you just have to think about it the right way. And I don't know, again, what your perspective are, but I've I've just seen it with people. It's like people are getting Zoom fatigue and, you know, yeah. it, it, you can see people light up when you show up at their office, you know, or show up uh, in a meeting with them. You know, it's just, it, it feels different. It is different. And I think people are getting some of that fatigue too. Dude, I feel that fatigue. I, I, yeah. I, say, yes, I say yes to a meeting and it shows up on my calendar. It's a Zoom. 
And, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I just, I, I just miss sometimes being able to have a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like I'm not in front of my, I'm out and about, I'm doing things. I'd love to be able to just talk to you for 15, 20 minutes and be done. And, but now if there's zooms on everything, it's like, but so understanding me would know that I would rather just have a conference call. I'd rather just have a phone call. Right. It's, yeah. it's easier for me. So I think that, and I used to think, well, relationship or data, right. A personal relationship or data, but they're not binary. Yeah. The data what and what you're saying to me is like how do we take the data that we collect and that we harvest and that we look at and that we gather and be able to use that to build better information that allows us to deepen the relationship right whether somebody knows me or not if they ask me to get on a zoom you know have a personal relationship or if somebody sends me an invite to get on a conference call that's just like your client saying do you want to be text do you want to be emailed yeah. or do you want to right? Like we just assume that everybody wants the same way. Well, that's not deepening a relationship, right? But that has nothing to do with playing golf with somebody or going to lunch. That has to do with them clicking on a survey form. Do you like to text, email, or a phone call, right? So to your point, that's gathering information to be able to better understand somebody. And I think looking at it from that perspective is the next age of deepening relationship like you talk about. But I think, I think I've lived in this world so long. It's like, well, I just know Jerry and we're, we're friends or we're boys, or we're, you know, we know each other from church or I know his family or whatever, and we grew up together or uh, they're a friend of so-and-so. And there's this connection perspective that allows us to say we have a relationship versus, no, I understand Jerry. I understand Jerry and what his needs and wants are. And therefore I deliver a product customized to what he needs. That is a space that you could get really good at. That's a space that I think is more valuable. Like you said, and that's, you know, how do we use our tools available to, to, to be able to be better at that versus trying to, you know, continue to try to keep up with the Joneses, if you will, and pack our schedules and do all these things that ultimately, you know, they may add value in the short term, but they certainly don't help us understand how to deliver a better product. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, you use the tools strategically to drive that experience where it's needed you know don't make that assumption that you know it's okay to do a zoom every time like you said i think that's yeah that's spot on um and the beauty is though we have a lot of tools available to us too to you know it's like anything we, if used in the right way technology is very powerful but it, if you know used in the wrong way or abused it's you know it can be deadly right <laughs> To really yeah, how about, how about introducing the, the service team, right? Creating that connection between uh, you as the agent, but also your team that helps you support, uh, you know, the infrastructure of that servicing for the entire year, right? Like, is the relationship just with you or is the relationship with your team? You yeah. know, like define relationship. Like, it's just, you know, is it your relationship? I hear producers say it all the time. My relationship. Yeah. It's like my client. It's so dangerous, man. My client, you know, it's like, dude. Like, I know, I know that you take pride in that and ownership, which is good, but it's just, it is unsustainable. That is a very amateur, uh, language. You just haven't hit the wall yet. Um, that comes from what it means to have a bunch of my clients. It's just not a good thing. Building a book of business versus a business, right? You know, I mean, that's, that's a lot of what, what that comes down to. Um, but but yeah, I mean, it's something we've put a lot of thought into, and I think everybody should. And I think it's dictated also by the types of clients you're going after, right? And the, what ability you're going to have to to build a good client experience or a client relationship. Um, and then ultimately, what does that mean? All of those things impact the strategy you want to take. But it also doesn't have to be rocket science. I mean, sometimes I think, you know, these things get overthought, but, you know, simply you were talking about data and it made me think like, you know, CRMs and, and stuff like that are very good at capturing stuff about people and stuff about your clients. Right. And so be thoughtful, you know, about, you know, Brett likes to uh, drink this kind of beer, or, you know, he likes to work out and, and do these things. And so keep, keep those relationship building notes. That's what we call yes. them in a certain place that you can find them and then have a cadence where, you go back to that or you review it before a call or something like that. And just, just think about that. You, 
I haven't talked to you for six months, maybe if I'm a service person or whatnot, but I look at my notes before we're having a call and I'm like, Hey, Brett, you know, last time we talked, you're about to go on that trip to, you know, Cancun. How was that? You know, did you take the family? Oh, awesome. It's so great. Like 30 seconds. And the person's like, wow, you, you remember that? Like, you know, and you're like, no, I mean, I, I'm just going to take a notes, but like that, so those great. little things though, matter a ton to people and they provide value because again, the client, it builds trust and the client feels like you truly understand them. You're, you're not, they're just not a ticket to you, yeah. you know, or, or a transaction as you put it earlier. That's so good. Yeah. I think, um, we're about to start a book called unreasonable hospitality. Uh, oh, yeah. So I'm pretty excited about it. A lot of people have heard about of that it. one. I have not read it, but I've had a a, a, a lot of people who I uh, have a lot of respect for have said that unanimously it's one of the best books that I've ever read. Really? And I'm just interested to see, yeah, how that, it's like, I think it was the number one restaurant in New York, I think. And then uh, they just crushed it. And then I think the, I think they sold and I think it ended up going out of business the next couple of years because it wasn't the same management. So it was just a perfect indication of like, what they were doing was just incredible relationship building. You know, yeah. they were catering and they were probably doing a good amount of volume, but they were, they had systems and processes set up to be able to be hospitable. And so what are, I'm excited. What are those? What are the strategies? What do they look like? How do you, know, like for us, exactly. It's like someone said mentions that they have two golden retrievers right down. You have two golden retrievers. Like, yeah. That means a lot for you to bring, come back to that. It's like, but that doesn't have to do with you knowing them on an intimate level that has to do with you leaving breadcrumbs for yourself and being able to have a process driven rapport strategy, right. And yeah. make somebody feel understood and heard. And so, yeah. How, how do you, how do you deliver on those? So I, I, I'd flip the switch on you for a second, Elliot, and ask you, Oh boy, what are some of the information that you guys gather that allows you to be better at that through yeah. the process? Yeah. I mean, so like we said, we call them relationship building notes and I, I wouldn't say that we have like a list, but really, you're looking for those things that people have interest in. You're looking for important events in their life. You're looking for uh, things they get excited about. Uh, it could be something negative going on in their life that you pick up on that maybe you could, you know, send them something or just even a note that says, hey, I'm thinking about you. Um, you know, so maybe they're uh, somebody, a family member sick or something like that. Um, yeah. anything that's going on that, that isn't, you know, directly related to the transaction or whatever the business you're doing, but is about them and who they are, um, is stuff to capture. And sometimes it seems super innocuous, like, you know, I'm that, that's just dumb. Why would I ever, you know, reference that? But again, the, almost the smaller things that people don't think are a big deal when you, when you re bring them up, they're like, holy crap. Like I, yeah. they would have never thought that you'd remember something like that. And again, it's just about having a system behind doing it. And, I, and I'm certainly not perfect at it because it is hard to to get in that or exercise, that muscle to do it repetitively. But uh, it, I think it's a super important one. And I, I, Randall Stutman, uh, who's a leadership uh, expert, he's been on, on the podcast as well, but he has a concept called the drip list. And you, basically you have everybody you want to manage a relationship with and you just manage the last time you had some sort of communication. And then within that, you keep, you keep these relationship notes and things about the person that you, you know, might be relevant to the list, but people that are doing that really well, you know, mm -hmm. they would, they might be able to go to their list and know that there's 30 people on there that really, really, really like golf. And they came across this article that was really fascinating about the game of golf or whatever. So they're going to send that to those 30 people as just a, Hey, I was thinking about you, you know? Yeah. Great. And I think that stuff is is powerful because it's yep. it, it's done not around a transaction. People don't look at it as like, oh, you know, it's easy when you're going in to try to sell somebody on a renewal and you, you know, say all this stuff that you remembered about them or something. But when it's out of the blue and you're, you know, you're just doing it to make sure that they know you're thinking about them and, you know, they, they're valuable to you like that, that builds deep relationships. But in order to do that, you have to know those things about them. So you have yeah. to have had the conversation or have had a way to capture and intake that information. That's cool. Yeah, Rod, Rod my business part, one of my business partners is, is, is incredibly good at that. Um, he calls it a benign touch, you know? So they kind of branded in here as like a benign touch. Like yeah. when you're calling for no reason or sending something for no reason, it's it. that's the best reason, yeah. right? 
because everybody's used to getting some sort of communication because there's an action that needs to be taken or there's something coming up or there's some alternative motive. It's like, you know, get in the habit of just connecting with people just for the purpose of connecting people. And I mean, that's, that's, that's just relationship building one-on-one. That's awesome. That's like the best, that's like the best friend that you have that lives across the country who just calls you out of the blue to just say hi. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's a, that's a real friend, you know, like that's, that's it. Hey man, I was just thinking about you. He's like, damn dude, that's really nice of you to do that, man. That's It'd cool. Be a three yeah. minute conversation you know, or even a voicemail sometimes. Like, you know, you yeah. get a voicemail from somebody like that. to just like, yeah, hey, I, I was just driving, thinking about cool. you, want to check in see what's up. And you're like, oh, you know, boost your mood and you'll get now. Now think about that in a business setting where, you know, it, you don't expect that is what I'm trying to yeah. say, you know, where it's going above and beyond almost to have some sort of a touch like that. And I think it goes further with people. So is it, is it fair to say that you could collect information and then segment that information based upon different categories and topics and different things like that? Is that, that kind of his, that's kind of his methodology, sports teams, yeah. uh, you know, interests, hobbies, and he's able to basically batch different activities to give him more efficiencies, but also allow him to deliver that rapport driven, you know, connection. Yep. Yeah. But he doesn't necessarily teach a system around it. He just teaches that concept, but then it is, you know, people execute on it in a lot of different ways. Like I've seen, I've seen, he just does a handwritten list, you know, does he have a, does he have a max limit? Does he have a limit of contacts? No. Nope. However many you, it, he says, however many relationships you want to keep alive in your life. Wow. And, you know, again, that doesn't have to be like we're going and getting beers every Thursday. That's, you know, I want to I want to communicate and touch every quarter or something, you know, we Keep call, that alive. We, one of the things we teach uh, commercial producers is coins. So centers of influence is what yeah. we call. And so that's what I used to do when I was producing. I had a spreadsheet and I'd have all my coins and, you know, I would just it, I'd be able to track and see when the last time I did. Now you have CRMs that do that for you, you know, yeah. Sheets. but yeah it's it's very similar concept i always found it was harder than you think it is to to keep in touch with oh. i always thought that i could keep in touch with more people than i thought i could no that's why a system is so imperative you know and and we at our sales symposium we had a another gentleman steve atkinson from uh admire leadership which is randall's company and he was talking about he loves to do his relationship touch bases uh while he's on planes because he goes, I fly about every week. So, you know, I pull out my list and I just look through it. And I'm like, who haven't I talked to in a while? I just track that. And what's something relevant that's going on that I'm I'm doing or whatever that I can touch base with them on. And he goes, that's what that's I do cool. on planes. And so it's, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can, uh, you know, manage it and and do it so you have a system around it. And, and there's some people that I've heard that kind of look at it and they're like, yeah, but then it's almost like a manufactured relationship. Like it feels like you're, you know, I don't know what the trend. It's not organic or whatnot, which I argue the exact opposite. I'm like, so now I've told you this, Brett. And the next time I reach out to you, even if you're like, oh, Elliot might have had a reminder or something, which I don't, but you know, you're gonna be like, that's still cool. Like, you know, he took the time to think through something that that he could send to me or whatever. Like, it's not. It's because I want to do it. It's not because right. and otherwise I would forget to do it. You know, yeah, but that's like that's like saying you put your kid's dance recital on your calendar. Yeah, you, you yeah. must not care about the dance recital because <laughs> you have to put it on your calendar. You know, that yeah. doesn't. Make, yeah, that doesn't. Yeah, I know that's a, that's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah that was quick. Uh, you should know. You should know. You should, know. You should just remember. Is. You shouldn't have to put it on your calendar. Kid yeah. me, I'm not that smart. Like, get out of here. <laughs> I put it on my calendar and I still have to make sure that I don't miss it. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the word. That's that's cool. Yeah, I, I, well, you've done that with me a couple of times, which I've always appreciated. You know, and I, I, I would, I, I, I feel like I could do a better job of that. I feel like I do a decent job, but I know you've sent me highlights of books that you're reading that maybe you and I were reading together or something that came up the last time we were talking. And, you know, I don't, I never thought that that's not organic. And, you know, that's, that's just, that's just really cool. The other person on the line doesn't know what your process is to make sure that you, yeah. you know, continue to stay in touch. You know, I just think there's elite, there's, there's, there's a very few amount of people who are good at that. And that is a massive skill, massive skill. Uh, um, it's one that I'm working on building. I'm certainly not perfect at it or, or as good as I'd like to be. Cause it, you know, you get to people like your partner and get, I don't know if that's Robert Taylor, but uh, Rod or Taylor, but uh, 
Yeah. I mean, they're just natural at it. Right. And you know, that's not my personality. I got to work at it. I'm more of an introvert, but, but it's not that you don't want to build a relationship. It's just, it's not second nature to, you know, be that outgoing, like I'm going to beat all the things and make sure I see you and talk to 85 people. So this is a way though, that I've found it. It really not only gives you a system to execute, to go do it, but, uh, it also creates, or it's the right way to create the relationship, in my opinion. So what's another, that's cool. That's a really good answer. Um, and that's like tactical advice that somebody could really truly use. I mean, whether you have a CRM or you use an Excel spreadsheet or you're writing it on paper, that's something that every single person could implement immediately. Yep. So take inventory, who are those people, and then start tracking who they are and touch them every quarter and have a and have a data trail for yourself, right? What you yep. what, what what is what you measure gets managed. Right. Yeah. So measuring something, it's not, you're not managing it. So that's, that's really good advice. What is from a relationship, from a relationship building perspective with a client, what is another thing that you guys like to collect or use or discuss to help understand the client better? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, we're the the secondary then piece to to how we look at it is what's the value that we're providing to that client, um, mm. and not not product, not um, you know, not necessarily monetary all the time, right? But sometimes that could be in our business, like peace of mind. It could be trust. It could be you know those things. But what's the value we're we're bringing back to them? And that is always going to create a deeper, better relationship, the more that they're feeling, you know. That you're delivering on that. Yeah, that we're delivering on on it. Exactly. Um, and so, I mean, part of the, again, the ways that we do that, uh, when we're engaging with a new client, you know, we're going in and asking just very open-ended questions. And a lot of people think, you know, that that sales process is about gathering the information we need to go quote or get the the data that we need. That is certainly a piece of it. But where we spend the most amount of time with our prospects is actually understanding them and how they tick. Like, what are they, what's their psychographic profile? Like, do they, is it even somebody that we want to want to jive with, you know, as a client? Because if they're not the the right type of prospect or client that wants the type of relationship that we're going to bring to the table, it's never going to, we're never going to have a good relationship. So it's all of those little things that we're trying to understand, you know, what are they concerned about in their business? What, mm-hmm. what things are going well, where are they going? What are their goals? Like, those are all the thing. those are all the pieces of data and the conversations that we're trying to have that we have found drive a much different relationship with the client when we're going to ask for the business, because they've experienced something different through that process than what they're used to in the past. They're used to like, okay, send me your policies you know, and then I need this other information. Here's a couple supplemental apps. And then I'm going to get some quotes and I'll be back to you in two months with, you know, what I got type of thing. Uh, That's the experience they go through. And so we just kind of say that stuff will come, you know, let's, let's dive in and see if we're even a good fit for you. And if, if you're a good fit for us. Interesting. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes total sense. And so when you deliver on that, are you, or when you get that information and you're looking to deliver on that, do you have any type of documentation in their profile? Do you have any directives? Do you have any outcomes? Do you have any, is there anything from a systems perspective where you're able to narrow down what those focuses are for each client and then make sure that you're delivering on that throughout the year? Or is that just something that the producers are aware of when they're interacting with those different clients? Yeah, that's the part that we don't, we haven't, quite nailed down from a systems perspective yet uh it's more so at the so we've we've hired to this now but we've hired a what's called a strategist role um and this is again on the commercial side for us uh but their job is just that it's going in and deeply understanding these clients being responsible for building relationships across that organization Uh, so you have a position for that correct wow that's super cool yeah yep and so that that's right now, but but we we're just having a conversation this morning of like continuing to extend that relationship like deep into our service teams, you know, and saying, okay, now they're having a conversation about the vehicle list or whatever, and you know, like we want them to have this same relationship building uh, conversation 
as a natural producer would or whatever. Yeah, just think about like North Stars. Like, you know, you might have three or four different North Stars that are important to clients. If they have something, if they have a North Star that's not congruent with what you deliver, then that would be, hey, we're not a good fit, right? That's yeah. a prequel. But if you have three or four different things that we can deliver on, it's almost like a hierarchy of needs. You know, is there a hierarchy of needs? Uh, so when you're delivering on checking the vehicle list, you're delivering through the filter or through the lens of, you know, whatever that North Star is. I'll just maybe give an example of just, yeah. Uh, well, you have a larger small business owner that, you know, is still, you know, one, pro one proprietor and they're, they're just very concerned with uh, risk. The business has got to the point where it's actually worth a significant amount of money and they don't have a risk management department. They're getting to the place where they just started to have more legal issues and more things that happen. And they just, they're losing sleep at night because they're becoming a, a bigger business and yeah. they don't really they handle the risk. That would be a North Star, right? And so understanding that hierarchy of needs when you're delivering to check the vehicle list, it's not just to check the vehicle list. It's to say, hey, just to make sure we don't have a mishap and we make sure we cover all of our bases to make sure something doesn't occur. I'd like to be able to go through this with you for 15 minutes. It's like just delivering the just delivering the ask with that need in mind is going to provoke a completely different response from that yeah. client than, hey, can you check this and let me know if there's any errors? Or can you check this and make sure this is right? You know, it's like making sure that your service team and, the, and, and you as the producer are lock and step on delivering what that, what, what was important to them. I'm just thinking out loud. That's yeah. really cool. And if you had, if you had a way to like label that in accounts and label that in a way that was transparent to That's where you need to remember what the outcome you're looking for is, that's a way that you could systemize and streamline to make sure that you're, you know, people remember why this person is with you, why this yeah. company, is with you, why this client is with you, what they actually care about. Um, just thinking out loud, that's pretty cool. Yeah. No, that gives me a couple ideas on how to think about that. I mean, I think that's gold right there because you're, you're creating a, I mean, North star to use your term, but you're creating something for your team to continuously go back to, to make sure that everybody's, everybody knows uh, where, what this client's important to this client and where they're going and, and what we need to make sure we're accomplishing in every conversation. Right. Yep. Like another, I, I'm thinking about one of our really larger clients, you know, one of their North stars is no surprises. They just, they, they're trying to avoid the surprises. Like yep. they, they have, they have a roadmap on how to get somewhere. And in their eyes, the, re, the ways that they don't show up at that destination is if things pop up along the way that deter them, right? So the getting in front of what could happen and the surprises and the what ifs, they view that as our job, right? Yeah. Which I love that. I get that. It makes total, total sense. Um, and so when you're having an annual review, instead of talking about the crime policy that they bought, they probably would rather understand what are the things that could happen within the crime family that aren't covered here and yeah. what are the things they need to do to mitigate it or what are the things they need to be self-assured but they just need to understand their self-insured but they want to know what those things are because if they happen if they happen because they chose not to take insurance or they chose not to do something then that's okay but they just want to have no surprises you know what i mean so it's like but getting your team to be able to deliver messages through that same filter is very difficult unless you have some sort of framework to be able to do it um, which we've struggled with that. We have definitely struggled with that, where the producer says one thing and they're delivering and assuming that the producer even gets it right, you know, and then now your product delivery team or or your or their team behind them doesn't hasn't been equipped to be able to have that same delivery because, you know, they just don't necessarily know what that North Star is. They're not yeah. privy to the conversations. They don't, you know, they don't know what the needs analysis is. You know, I just think... Um, I know we could do a much better job of connecting yeah. the dots on them. And I think as you get larger and as your team gets bigger and more people are involved with one account, it becomes even more imperative to be able to have transparency and systems to be able to, to, to continue to be cohesive with that. Yeah. Imagine the power in that. Like even, so take, I was like to take these like to the small scale, right? So, so, so that client, no surprises, right? That's been communicated then to the service team. So, you know, they're, something comes up, I don't know. And, and one of your service team members is going to call the client for the only reason that, Hey, I want to let you know this, this is going on because I know you guys don't like surprises and like using that verbiage and, and calling, like, 
Holy I, cow, that client's going to be like. That's relationship. You yeah. understand me. You understand. Exactly. That screams, this person gets me. Like that is relationship 101. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Regardless of what the reason is. It could be something really small. It doesn't you know matter. I mean? If you restate you that you i understand you and then you give me a news you're gonna think oh my god this person totally gets me you know thank yeah. goodness i'm done i totally yeah and it, and then it's not even the producer the one that had the original conversation it's so, you know the the service person and the client's going holy cow they you know they got their their shit right like they, they all under it, yeah that's huge uh i'm gonna, I had take, a I'm gonna steal some things from that i had a client one Time who's who's a, who's a he's still with us to this day. He's a it's a great account. Developed a really good relationship. But he's a tough cookie. He was a he was a CEO of a, a, a New York Stock Exchange company at one point. He dealt with the SEC, just big business stuff. And uh, he then retired, came back out of retirement to do a smaller uh, contracting business, which is still a great business, but um, you know just not at the same level that he was at. And I remember early in the relationship, something happened, and I gave this big explanation. Right. And I over, I, I was, you know, cause I'm nervous, you know, yeah. something small, but I wanted to make sure he knew that I knew I was on top of my game and I had taken all the time to do the work and, and all, and he, and he, he I hung up the phone and he sent me an email. He said, Hey Brett, I really like you. So I'm going to let you know this. I don't want to know any of that when things come up. I just want you to tell me what needs to be happening and leave it at that. Yeah. And he was, that was his way of saying, dude, you just frustrated me because that's not my North Star. I don't care what happened. I don't care what the explanation is. I don't want any of that. I have to deal with my own nonsense. I don't want to deal with your nonsense. Yeah. Just tell me what needs to be happening and be done with it. And I was like, I almost sent an email back that gave him like this long explanation of how I understood. But I'm like, whoa, hold on, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, dude. Because I'm like nervous. And I, I went, I, my response was totally understand. Thank you. That was it. And then from there on out, for now the last eight years, when something happens, I call him and I tell him exactly what happened. I tell him what needs to happen next. And that's it. Yep. And that's against my nature. It's hard. But I learned a lot from that. I've done it now with other clients. But also from him, that was a North Star for him. He's like, don't dump all your stuff on me, dude. Like, yeah. I hire you so you handle it. Don't dump it on me. Just tell me what I need to do to fix it. That's the value that you bring to me. And so that's a North Star. His was save me the bullshit, you know, save me the BS. I don't want to hear it. Just tell me what needs to happen and what we need to do to fix it, you know? And so like, that's a perfect example of like, if somebody's interacting with him, that's on my team and they do the exact same thing that I did because it's not in the profile or it's not in his, his you know, it's not in, in, in how do I have that transparency? Again, we're not delivering on what's important to him. So yeah. therefore- it's almost a friction to the relationship. You know, there's one thing of building it and there's nothing from er eroding it away. So just a thought out loud on that. I just, I could probably come up with a hundred of. No kidding. Yeah. I've messed that up, you know, so good thoughts. Absolutely. Well, yeah, we've been, we've been going for 45 minutes. So uh, anything else on your brain, you know, client relationship or not that, uh, you know, you think everybody should know about? I think brand, man, I think brand has to do with trust. You know, I think a lot of times we hear this brand, brand, brand thing, but brand to me is trust. It's, it's, it's a very specific character identity and building that a trust that that is truly who you are. So a mark, an internal marketing and internal touches to be able to solidify and show and drip on who it is that you are and what you do to deliver on that, I think is very important at scale um, because there's just only so much personal reach that all of us have, but brand is infinite. Media yeah. lives forever. Media lives 24 hours. Media is infinite. Media has unlimited scale. And so the idea of using media for branding is not just to market, to get more clients, it's to build trust and it's to build a slot and identity within the marketplace that people relate to and are drawn to. And I think our clients are the number one place that we should start with brand because that is the relationships that we have, but reaffirming who we are throughout the process is so, so, so valuable. And you can do it with one client or you can do it with 10,000 clients. So that was the only thing I would add is that what I personally, I think what we've learned or what I've learned through the process of maybe just getting to a couple different levels is that 
brand becomes so, so vitally important because it can scale. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just think it's super valuable. I think it's difficult. I think it takes a lot of intention. Uh, I think there's a there's a point where it doesn't make sense because the amount of input that you have to put in, you might not get the output. But at some point, you're going to hit a wall where you go, man, I need longer tentacles. And I think brand is is a really, really powerful way to do that. Yeah, couldn't agree more with that. That's a great way to to summarize it up. So appreciate you, man. This has been fun. Uh, I hope everybody got, you know, some good info out. But, you know, it's always fun to, to go back and forth and riff a little bit with, with your brother. Yeah, you too, man. I always enjoy it, man. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we'll catch you next month. All right. Sounds good.